Okay, we should be live about now, I expect. So we're just waiting for everyone to join on here now and I'm going to uh, play a little bit of prelude music before we begin. Or maybe there's no prelude music this evening, but we'll welcome everybody to join online and uh, give all the parishes a chance now to uh, share to their own Facebook pages because we have uh, four parishes together here tonight is um, Bay Roberts Coley's Point, Port of Grey, Shears Town and the Resurrection. And uh, give them I'm missing the prelude music tonight, so I'm going to just come on here and welcome everybody. Uh, I guess I forgot to put that in the slides. But uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in and uh, to be with us here tonight. And hopefully it'll be lots of time for everybody to uh, connect on Facebook. So oh, it's seven o'clock, so now we can, uh, would you like to do a welcome first, um, Father Gerald? Yes, thank you. Welcome everyone to our, our joint uh, midweek Lenten service between the parishes of Shearstown, Butlersville, Bay Roberts, Coley's Point, Port of Grave and the Resurrection. Welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We we'll begin now with our opening hymn, Lord have mercy. Okay, got video up now.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we say, O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the everlasting Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh, Son of God, O oh, giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. And now for the proclamation of the words, Pat will read our first reading. A reading from the second book of Samuel. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb which he had bought. He brought it up and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonite. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of his very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this before all Israel and before the sun. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said to David, now the Lord has put away your sin. 
you shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you almost must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which in indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. We now have our gradual hymn, Song of the Bride. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas, went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. 
On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will, will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him said, surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, you have said so. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our theme during this Lenten journey is called Restored in Christ and Valerie's um, a gradual hymn was like Return to Me, We're Restored in Christ. And tonight the, the homily and the work is based on broken trust. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. We heard Pat read tonight. The prophet Nathan was given a task, a mission, and it was not an easy one. Nathan had to let King David know that he had done evil in the sight of the Lord. David, the short version is he'd arranged for Uriah the Hittite, a trusted soldier, to be killed in battle so that he could marry the widow. As I said, short version. But this was the same as David having actually physically killed Uriah himself. And I don't need to imagine that a barefaced confrontation between David and Nathan would have led, led to some kind of disaster for Nathan. So in a roundabout way, he told a story about the rich man and the poor man, and he appealed to what was still good and decent in David. And it worked because David got angry at the story and he was really angry at the man. But then he was told that he was the man. David was confronted. And through this, there was a breakthrough that pierced his heart and he realized that he had sinned against the Lord. Nathan was sent by the Lord to do the Lord's work, not his opinion, not his will, not what he wanted, but the Lord's work. And he succeeded in doing what the Lord asked him. The trust put on him was honored. Trustworthy people can sometimes be hard to find. Who do we trust? Only last evening, uh, in, well, it was an evening and nighttime, I guess it was, there was a segment on the news that really caught my attention because the words jumped out from the person that was being interviewed saying broken trust. And I thought, that's the theme for tonight, broken trust. And some of you may or may not have seen it. It was from Toronto and it was about the black community that they are not being vaccinated as at the rate of others. And it's their choice because they, their trust had been broken. The, the trust of the authorities, they couldn't trust 
to believe that the vaccine is safe, they may have been led being led down the wrong road. And they said there it was broken trust. So there we are. Online marketing, um, I've seen several times sets of wedding bands for sale. Broken engagements, broken promises, broken marriage. It's sad. When we experience broken trust, we can become bitter, we can become cynical, disillusioned. Suspicion comes in of almost everything and everyone around, and it's a frightening thing. Questions come like, what's his angle? Or what's she going to get out of this? It seems to be always negativity. Questions abound that are not really healthy ones. It becomes difficult when someone genuinely does something good and special for no reason, only out of love and kindness. And it's hard sometimes to give them credit. There is one who we can absolutely trust, our Lord Jesus. He puts his trust in us too. He trusts us to do his work. He trusts us to do his will. And we only too often fail. Yet we can still trust him to love us in amidst it all. Tonight, for a moment, we're going to look at Judas. Judas, someone handpicked by Jesus. How could it be that he could? do what he did. He was trusted, we hear from scripture, with the money, the, the purse they used. And it's really almost unbearable to think about it. If this can happen to, G to Judas, what chance have we got? Books, movies, scholars, theologians, even ourselves, I guess we've often wondered about how did it come about, trying to figure out Judas. Well, nothing really gives us a whole answer. They all fall short. Sometimes we hear that, well, we do from scripture, he, he was a thief, he pilfered from, from their bit of money. Was he tempted by money? Actually, Judas made a ridiculous bargain by betraying Jesus for what amounts to is a handful of coins. He couldn't get rich on that. Another thought that we, we know that it could have been he belonged to the group of zealots who longed, longed for a Messiah, longed to be free from oppression, oppression from the Romans. And Perhaps Judas thought by pushing Jesus far enough that Jesus would take his rightful place as a physical leader who would overthrow the Romans and be the Messiah that he thought he was to be. He might finally take control. You know, Judas may have in the beginning totally idolized Jesus. Here he is. Look, others have said, come and see, this is the Messiah. He must have been excited. And perhaps towards the end, he may even have come to hate him. Because Jesus was not what Judas wanted him to be. So whatever Judas thought, whatever Judas planned, we realize he did in amazing secrecy, covertly. If only the disciples had known, but Jesus knew. Jesus did not stop Judas. Have you ever noticed that God doesn't coerce us into anything? God confronts us, sometimes gently, sometimes not quite so gently. And uh, he tries, I believe, to shock us into some kind of sanity. Jesus confronted Judas at the Last Supper. Was he trying to shock Judas 
into realizing what he was doing? Was he giving him that extra chance? Did Judas look into Jesus' eyes and still turn around and leave? Later on that night, we hear he even kissed Jesus. How personal, how touching. I had a, a picture. Oh, I can do this here. This one is actually a, a depiction from a, an artist who, it's from when Peter betrayed Jesus and Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Judas would have had that physical confrontation. The trust was broken. The deed, the betrayal was done. And Judas realized too late what he'd done. Jesus was condemned. Jesus did not fight back. In Matthew 27, just reading on a little bit from where we are tonight, it actually says, Judas repented. I don't think I'd ever really realized that that's so powerful a word. He repented, but he couldn't go back. It was too late. We too have been guilty of broken trust, even worldwide, as people, as individuals. Is it too late for us? We know there's no going back. We can't redo situations, no matter how sorry we are. So is there any hope? Well, of course there is. Those guilty of broken trust are restored. They are forgiven. Jesus spoke the words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Betrayers can become God's children. Those are big words. Those are heavy words. Forgiveness, what kind of love is that? Nathan, Nathan the prophet shocked David into repentance. Our Lord Jesus Christ restores us. We are restored in Christ. He paid the price. And as the song goes, the, the one, the power of the cross, we stand forgiven at the cross. We won't die. We have the promise of Jesus. We have to accept that. Live for him. Listen to him. Follow him. My friends, we have a wonderful savior. We are restored always in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to take a moment of silence and to uh, listen and notice how the Spirit may be speaking to you in and through the scriptures that were read and the homily that was shared. And uh, notice if there's any spiritual fruit there for you that you may be able to take into your evening and to the rest of this Lenten week. So we'll just have a moment of silence together. Now I invite you to share with me in this affirmation of faith, which is called the Shema of the Hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first of the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these.
And now, my friends, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And now for our closing hymn once again. Dear friends, let us go forth from this time of prayer together in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night.